G'day guys, today we're going to talk about Gyro Boy. Well, not the classic Gyro Boy from EB3, but the new Gyro Boy, which I am calling Gyro Girl, because this is the younger, lighter sibling of Gyro Boy. This is built with Spike Prime. And um, if you've seen this video, I compare a lot of the advantages of Spike Prime over EV3. And one of the big things was the, uh, the squareness of the motors and the hub. And it really um, uh, shows how important that is with a build like this, because um, we can build this gyro balancing robot in about a dozen pieces. It's really quite impressive. Hold on for a second, I'm getting more. So today we're going to split the video into a few sections. You can check out the description if you want to skip to the right section for you, okay? We're going to start off by building Gyro Girl. And then I'm going to give you a little bit of pseudocode on the balancing code, okay? Uh, I'm going to talk about something called PID, and then I'm going to show you the actual code that I used uh, in that balancing video. Full disclosure, I haven't played with this robot a lot. We can tune it a lot more, but I'm going to teach you how to do some tuning yourself so that you can make sure that your robot works in the kind of environment that you want to work in. Okay?
Okay, so now that we've built Gyro Girl, uh, let's talk a little bit about the pseudocode, okay? So what are we trying to do to balance this robot? Well, you can think about it as a few different layers, okay? At the very simplest, we are using the onboard gyroscope, okay? The onboard gyroscope, what are we wanting it to do? We want it so that when we are tilting over this way to rotate the motors that way, right? To rotate so that we move our wheels under where it's falling, right? And then when it's tilting the other way, we rotate the wheels back towards where it's falling. So far, so good, right? But it turns out that with a very unstable build like this one, like you might have seen the test lab robot. The test lab robot is a lot more stable because the, the weight is between the wheels. It's a lot lower. And then if it's fallen over, um, there, there's a better, uh, better chance for you to write it back up. Well, for this build, it's a little bit different because um, it is very unstable. All right. For example, if I if I started off lying down, it doesn't have enough power to put it back up. Right. So it's very mechanically unstable. So if I want to uh, make it so that it starts off um, uh, balanced, then I'll need to make sure that I have to stand. Okay. So I need to stand uh, it very close to being balanced before I run the code because that way the and the motors will have enough power to actually correct itself before it falls uh, past a certain point where the motors won't have enough strength to write itself back up. Okay, so the first bit was easy, right? It's, it's almost an if-else statement. If it is falling this way, we want to move the motors that way, okay, to, to go under it. Okay? If it's falling the opposite way, we rotate the motors the opposite way. Pretty simple, right? But then there is a catch. Okay, the catch is the motors need to move proportionally to how much it is tilting. Okay, because if it is not tilting very much, the motors shouldn't have to move very much at all. Does that make sense? Uh, whereas if, it's, if it was tilting more, then the motors will also need to move more. So this is called proportional movement, okay? That means that when we are tilting more, we need to move the motors more, okay? And that puts the P in PID. PID, of course, is proportional integral and derivative um, uh, controllers, okay? Uh, we did a great video using a, a, a motorcycle example using Bike Prime. Uh, up over here, so uh, check that out if you haven't seen it before. But with the proportional part of the code, it means that the more that we are off the the target, the more we are going to move the motors. That makes sense, right? Uh, and a lot of the time, that is all you'll need is to make it so that um, you are moving proportional to the error. But then we have another problem. The other, another problem is that um, we are, uh, need, need to also take into account the momentum of this shift. Because if I started off upright, but then I suddenly got knocked, and then I suddenly switched over to this side, if I just use the normal proportional code, it's not going to be enough power. Right, because there is some momentum from the movement of being knocked knocked around, or maybe the, there's a slight breeze, or maybe there's a slight bump that moves my robot to tilt more than normal, right? And that's where we use the integral of the uh, PID co controller. Okay, the integral is taking into account the previous readings of my error. So that's the integral. So the integral is to work out how far we are off, okay, off the target, but then um, also work out the history of how, how far we've been off the target. So that if I was shifting really, really quickly, then we would also compensate for that by increasing power to the motors more than normally what we would have if we had just used the proportional uh, controller. And sometimes the uh, proportional and integral is all you'll need for your robot. But then what you'll find is that 
uh, there'll be a third problem. The third problem is that after you have corrected your movement, uh, you will overcompensate and then uh, you'll have uh, uh, some wiggle, okay? Uh, and then to smoothen out those, um, those wiggling movements um, uh, where your robot or your controller is overcompensating, then you will need to add something called a derivative, which is D in PID. And what that does is that smoothens out the, uh, the, the compensation so that, um, so that the movement is a lot better. Okay? So that is the pseudo code. And hopefully I have um, uh, made PID a little bit clearer. Uh, if you want to see more about PID, then check out the description underneath because uh, there's plenty of other, many more, much more technical uh, aspects of PID, which I'm definitely not covering off right now. But let's have a look at the code for this particular robot now. Okay, so you see here that uh, this is the code. So here are a bunch of things that uh, I've created, a bunch of variables. And when the program starts, I turn on my smiley face. And then I wait for three seconds just to give us enough time to balance out our robot. And then I'm setting something called a roll target because that is the gyro roll setting that, um, uh, that I find is as close to balanced as possible. Okay, so 88.95 degrees is for this robot going to be very close to being balanced. Then the power setting is going to be our multiplier for our motor power. And then KP, KI, and KD, these are what's called gain values, okay? Gain values are what we use to tune the PID controller, okay? So even if you don't have anything else, um, uh, and you just put the shell of all this code in for any of your PID uh, controllers, then uh, it would, almost always work. You just need to tune these, these numbers and that is probably the most tedious part of doing a balancing robot like this, okay? So uh, these are the numbers for KP, KI and KD, the gain values for my balancing robot on carpet, okay? If I wanted to make this balance on a table or uh, on wood or on glass or metal, then you would probably need to tweak these numbers, okay? How do you tweak these numbers? Well, first of all, what you do is you'd set everything to zero, okay? And then see if it works. It's not gonna work. <laughs> and then you increase your p-value, okay? Your kp, which is your, um, your proportional uh, controller. And then you'll see that it will start to compensate for your errors. And then you keep on increasing it until it looks like it is going to overcompensate. And then you increase your I values, okay? Uh, and then after your K and I are almost done uh, and your robot is balancing quite well, then you tweak your D values, okay? Well, I find that that's, uh, that's working for me, uh, but a lot of people like to do, do it uh, using KP first and then KD and then KI. It really depends on the robot, how 10, how, uh, what its tendency is to shift around and what its tendency is for uh, corrections, okay? And then uh, I set integral to zero uh, because I find that if I don't set it to zero, then uh, it always keeps storing the value. Um, then we set the motors to E plus A. And then this is the forever loop for our PID controller. So we set the error to be my roll target, which was the 88.95, minus my roll angle, which is um, the, the gyroscope inbuilt in my machine. And then we set the integral to be the integral plus the error multiplied by 0.25. And then the derivative is going to be error minus previous error. Remember, we are uh, trying to find the gap in that error. And then we're setting the previous error to error over here. And then we set the result, which is the actual power that we are going to, well, part of the actual power that we're going to pump into the wheels to the error multiplied by KP. This is the 
proportional part of your PID, and then plus i, which is integral multiplied by ki, which is your i value of your PID, and then derivative multiplied by kd, which is the d value of your PID. And then finally, we just set the motor power for um, result multiplied by power, which is our power multiplication. Uh, our, well, our power multiplier here. Okay. And there you go. This is the code for Gyro Girl and a very brief uh, explanation of PID. I'm definitely not doing it justice by explaining it in one video. Uh, but if you want to want to find out more, then make sure you check out that description. Okay. All right. Until next time. I'll see you later.